Hi, in this video I edit the images from the Flamborough vlog. Hi, I'm Adam and welcome to First Man Photography, the channel that will help you take your photography to the next level. If you haven't done so yet, please do follow me on Instagram. I think it's a great place to share our photos and there's some great conversation going on as well. I'll put a link down below and I'll see you there. Okay, let's get into it. Okay, so first of all, for those of you that celebrate it, I wish you a Merry Christmas. I'm quite pleased that Christmas has fallen on a Sunday so I could present this and wish you a good day. But that's not what we're here for. I'm here uh, because I have filmed the vlog last week. Hopefully you've seen that already. If you haven't, I'll put a link down below for that and a card up here for you to click and watch that first. Once you've seen that, come back to this and then I'm going to take you through my full editing session. It's quite a long video, so it's probably not for everybody, but you can dip in, dip out. But I think there's some good information in here and I'm just going through the process live time and sharing, showing you how I post-process my images. I know quite a few of you have been asking for a few more post-processing tips and tricks recently, so hopefully this will go some way to provide that as well. So I'm going to move over to the computer and we'll get to editing those images. Okay, so here we are in Adobe Lightroom, and I'm only gonna be using Adobe Lightroom for this edit. If you haven't got that yet, you can check it out. I'll put a link down below for you to get a free trial. So it is a powerhouse of photo editing, and you get Photoshop along with that, so it's well worth checking out. Right, so these are my images from the shoot today. Hopefully you have seen the vlog. If you haven't, go and check that out first, and this will then make a little bit more sense. But I've had quite a few requests requests recently to go a bit more in depth about the photo editing, how the post-production works and how you can improve an image in post-production because it is essentially uh, part of the artistic process because in the past when you're in the dark room, you used to make changes and add contrast and things like that in the dark room and that's all we're doing now in Lightroom digitally. So it is part of the creative process. And I think it's as equal equal a part almost as the what, you, what you're actually shooting in camera. So like I said, these are my images from today. Uh, there's about 28 images. I also have a couple on the 700D. These were all taken on the 5D Mark IV. I've got four shots on the 700D and then a load of shots that are I'm going to convert into time lapses uh, that were taken on the 5D as well. I'll put them in a separate folder just to not confuse things. I have recently been suffering from a cold, so if there's a few sniffs and snuffles in the video, I apologise for that. I will try and edit it, edit it out as many of I can, as I can, but if I miss a few, then please do forgive me. Right, it's been a long day, so I want to get this done. I've already been through these once just to have a quick look at the ones that I'm going to capture, uh, the ones that I'm going to edit at the best best of the day. So it's this one, the ones with the flags here that I'm going to do. Today I've had a really bad time with my exposure for some reason. That exposure's off on almost all of these. And if you've seen the vlog, it was generally long exposures that I was doing today. Sometimes when you're doing long exposures, you, might, you it depends on what MD filter you put on there. So say today I've mostly used a 10 stop filter. You've got to reduce the shutter speed by 10 stops. And that's how you get the long exposure. Sometimes though, depending on what filter you're using, that might not be exactly 10 stops. So when you calculate the time that you're going to shoot the image for, which will be 10 stops, it might come, it might be a little bit different to what the actual uh, measurement of the filter is, because it might say it's 10 stops, but it might be nine. It might be 11 or somewhere in between so your exposure might be off a little bit i think i'm reaching with that excuse today because i think i've just been a little bit off so let's have a quick look at this image here that was my test shot for the long exposure so you can see that is underexposed look at the histogram here underexposed there's no white in there at all and that is just probably a lack of concentration from myself today it was quite dull, so when I was using, I was using the screen as my meter at, as I shot the images, and because it was quite dark conditions today, it was looking quite bright on the back of the camera. 
It looked okay on the back of the camera, but I didn't. Just out, I don't know why I didn't, but I didn't use the histogram today in the camera, and I should have done. It is difficult, to be fair to me, when you're filming video and creating lots of content in the day to be totally focused on the photography. That's what's happened today. But, as you will see, I can rescue it, or not rescue it, but just bring it back to where it should be in Lightroom now. So, let's get into these first images. This was the first composition here. And as you can see, it's underexposed, but I shot these as, I bracketed them as you saw in the video. So I've got the first three here. I think these this first lot is the better image because of the color in the sky. If we compare this one to this one, I think you will agree. Um, let's do that again. How do we, there is a new feature where you can sort of look at them side by side that's a bit better than the compare button, but let's do it with that one. No, that's still not working. I don't know how to do that. I very rarely use it, but look, you've got this one here and this one here. And I think there's just a bit more, there's less detail in the sky on this one. So I think this image is the one to go for. And that's bracketed with these next two. That one, I mean, it's just way underexposed. So that's not going to be any good to me. So I think what I will do is use these two here and then combine them into a HDR. Just wait for Lightroom to do its thing. Take a drink of water. Okay. And I don't want it to add any tones for me there. And then I'm going to click Merge, and that should create a DNG file for me. And that is the first one we're going to have a look at. That's there. I'm just going to click P to pick that one. And then that's the one I'm going to be working with. Let's just, as I've already been through all of these, I'm going to just go down to here and filter it with the flagged images. And these are the ones we're going to be going through. So... This one is the DNG file, I believe. Yes, it is. So let's go into the develop module and we'll start editing the image. Now, again, straight away, the first thing I, I notice here is that my horizon is horrendously not straight. I had trekked out, as you might have seen on the vlog, to be fair, down the, onto the top of these cliffs. I was stood on a very narrow ledge. The tripod was not on a level surface. And that's probably why. I probably also didn't take enough time to compose the shot, and it's not straight. So I'm usually pretty good at that, but here I've not done so well. Easily solved, though, and it's not hugely wrong, so it shouldn't crop too much of my image, but hit R to bring up the crop tool, and then just click on the angle button here, and then you can just take your line across here on the horizon, and that will straighten the image up. Hit Return and we're back to having a nice straight image. So I'm underexposed here, so I'm just gonna start off by increasing my exposure a little bit, probably about one stop. I'm gonna drag the whites up to match up the histogram at the top here, and then I wanna raise the shadows to bring out some of the detail in the bottom of the image, and just drag the blacks down a little bit more. And now I want to pull some detail out of that sky, which I know is there. So I'm going to use the graduated filter tool and just drag that down about onto the horizon there. And then just bring my exposure down to start bringing the detail out of that sky. We'll start off at about 1.7, I think maybe. Drag the highlights down a little bit more. And then I want to increase the saturation. And I'm going to change the white balance slightly as well. Let's just experiment with that. Go a bit more towards the yellow. I think that looks okay like that. Let's try the other way. I don't like the blue as much in the sky there. So I'm going to just going to go a little bit more towards the yellow. And enhance some of the pinks in the and magentas in the sky there. I don't want to go too far to make the sky totally magenta. I just want to make it look like it was when I was there and highlight some of those colors. I'm going to just go up a little bit more on the saturation and then that looks okay to me. And then 
a little bit of contrast maybe. That's not making much difference. I'm just going to undo that and then bring take away the filter again, the filter tool again, and we have a bit of an image there. Right, let's now have a look at the contrast. I want to give that a nice little boost to bring out some of the the punch of the image and drag up. I'm just going to increase the exposure a little bit more and take those shadows up a little bit more again. And I'm going to add some the white bring the whites back up as well to where they were and drag those blacks down and that's taken a little bit of detail out of the sky again, but that's that's fine. Or increase the exposure of the sky again, but that's fine. Now let's add a little bit of vibrance up to about 20. And I don't want it to be too colourful, this image, in the foreground particularly. So I'm just going to try desaturating by about 10. And that is looking pretty good. Look at the histogram now, though. I'm getting much a much nicer curve in the histogram there. Just bring those whites up a little bit more to maximise them and the blacks down a bit. And we're starting to get somewhere in the right area. So I'm just going to go back into the graduated filter tool and bring that down a little, bring the highlights down a little bit more and the exposure down to probably about two stops and then see how that looks. When I'm editing like this, every now and again, I will just press F to make it go full screen to fully utilize the screen real estate that you have. And that's not looking too bad. I'm going to add a little bit more contrast and I'm going to use the curve for that. Let's try a medium curve first. Yeah, that just adds that extra little punch, especially in the foreground here. And now I'm just going to play around a little bit with my colors again. I just want to remove a little bit of the yellow from the foreground because I'm finding that just a little bit off putting. And then I'm going to increase the green a bit because that is the color that I could see with my own eyes at the time. And I just don't, I don't particularly like that yellow. It sort of dom dominates the image too much. So I'm just going to desaturate that. And I might actually try increasing the saturation by about five again overall. And then just balancing those whites again all the time just to keep it right. Okay, now I'm using a 17 to 40 millimeter lens here. So I'm going to enable the profile corrections just to remove some of the vignetting that's caused with that lens and particularly with the long exposure. You often get a sort of a vignette around the outside, but it's worse the longer you expose and the more ND that you have on there. So that's starting to look pretty decent to me. I might just go and add a little bit more contrast again. Let's try a strong contrast on here. Uh, that might have gone a little bit too far. Let's go back to medium and I'm going to go back into the graduated filter again and just bring that down a little bit more, maybe to about there. Undo that. And I think I've possibly gone a little bit too far. I'm just going to drag the overall exposure down a little bit. And that's starting to look pretty good. I would like to, I might just reduce the clarity a little bit on here just to smooth out that water a little bit more because my exposure time wasn't hugely long. It was only 15 seconds. It has smoothed the water out a little bit, as you can see, but there is still a bit of detail in there which I would like to remove. You can go in and make selective changes here with the brush tool, but it's not always that accurate. Uh, and you can also use the Google Nick collection, which I'm not going to do right now. So I might just increase that contrast a little bit there. Bring the exposure back down a little bit. And I'm not totally feeling this image. I'm just going to bring the shadows back down a bit as well. And that's starting to look a little bit better, I think. Let's try just arranging the overall tint there. That's actually looking pretty nice now. That's looking a little bit better for me, better color. And it's starting to look like a pretty good image. Let's press F again to make it to full screen. And I'm quite liking what I see there. I might go back into it again after doing the others just to have a little look at it, tinker with it a little bit more, 
till it's right at the point that I want to do, that I want to have it. But that's looking pretty good to me. I just explain my composition here because I did promise that I would talk a little bit more about composition recently. And we can look at the rule of thirds here if I hit the R button to bring up the crop tool. And this has the rule of thirds on it. So this image, I have the horizon line here pretty much along the rule of third line at the top, which just makes that image just feel a bit more natural when you're looking at it. You also want to have your detail in the shot around the intersecting points here, which I have done here. So you've got this, the sort of tip of this cliff here. You've got the tip of this cliff on this point here and just sort of these, this little crop, outcrop here with the birds on top of it here. Now, it's not the perfect image because this area here is the sort of weak link for me of my image here. There's not a lot of interest in that bit, but from where I was stood, that was unavoidable. I do like the detail down in this little cove here. And that this cliff, this and that cliff here, or this whole outcrop here, kind of leads you into the image with your leading lines there. And then you sort of you look up, find this cliff, the cliffs here, the horizon, and then the colour in the sky. So that's what I was thinking about when composing this image. I'm doing my best with what I've got to in front of me. This, like I say, this bit's sort of not quite perfect, but it's not a bad image. I'm overall pretty happy with it. Like I say, I'll probably go back into it later on and have a little tinker because you, you want to do your initial edit, then go back in later on because you might you see it with sort of different eyes after you've had a little bit of rest a rest from editing and sometimes your creative juices will go in a different direction and the image will eventually turn out like you want it. So two or three sittings usually to get the perfect image if you're shooting a landscape shot. If you could do in a wedding or something like that, you're, you don't have time to go through each image three times, but if you've just got one or two images that's going to be the final piece of work of your day, then you've got time to do it. All right, another little drink of water there and undo that just escape out of that crop tool and we'll go back to our grid and that is looking pretty good that first image i'm happy with that so let's go on to the next one which is this which was my second location of the day and we'll go straight into the develop module now i did two images of this one again it's underexposed look at it i did two images with this and that was purposeful in the video in the vlog i talked about having different compositions, experimenting, not being afraid to experiment and trying different things. So for this one, I had this initial composition, which I think is my favorite. And then I went a bit further out to get that slightly wider composition. Now, another mistake I made, full of errors today. I don't know why, I don't normally do that. But another error I made was I went too wide on this one when I had two screw, screw in filters attached to the front of my lens and they are starting to show in the image in the form of these vignettes. Again, I was just using the back of the screen. I didn't, I, th I think, I don't think I even looked through the viewfinder for this one because I'd already composed the shot on the previous one. I just zoomed out a little bit. I obviously went too far and I didn't check it and they crept into my image, mainly because I didn't check. I didn't notice it on the back of the screen at the time of shooting it, but so we're just gonna have to crop in a little bit to take those out. Now, they're fairly similar in terms of exposure and stuff. So I'm hoping I just need to edit this one and I will then copy and paste the settings over to that one and just crop that next this one a little bit. So let's start with this one. We're in the develop, mod develop module already and I shall start with getting that exposure up. So let's go up about a stop and a half till we get that foreground detail about there. And then we'll drag the shadows up to bring the detail out of the shadow area here. We'll start about there and then immediately scroll down the bar here. Remove the chromatic aberration because it's a bit of a problem with that 17 to 40 millimeter lens. And enable profile corrections to remove that vignette. I don't want to remove the distortion because it doesn't spoil the image. And I want to just keep it as natural as possible. Right, so let's go back up now we've done that and we'll go to the contrast let's add our contrast in and start 
adding that punch to the image that contrast gives you. And I'm just going to raise those shadows a little bit more for the foreground. And then we shall, what should we do next? Let's balance the whites and the blacks a bit there and bring the blacks down. And then I want to pull some of the detail out of that sky. So again, I'm going to use the graduated filter tool to do that. I do not bother with graduated filters in the field anymore. It just, it saves me time not to do it. And I just don't think that you need them anymore. So I don't use them. If I'm really taking care to capture that top notch shot, I will bracket like I did in the first one, although I mucked it up a little bit. I didn't bracket this one because I just did one long exposure, but you can, t the, the detail that's captured in raw files in modern cameras, you can take the detail out of the sky just using this digital graduated filter, which is what I'm doing here again. So let's drag that exposure down to bring some of that detail out of the sky. I'm going to change the white balance a little bit just to add in a tiny bit of blue there and increase the saturation a little bit and drag down my highlights a tiny bit. I think I've gone a little bit too far there. Let's just take it to a stop and a half and then undo that because now we have that detail in the sky. Okay, and I'm going to add some vibrance in there. This feels a bit more like a full color image because I used the circular polarizer when I shot this, which has allowed me to see into the water because this was initially going to be my sunrise shot because if it hadn't been quite cloudy, this cloudy, when at the time the sun rose, you would have seen the sunrise somewhere around here. And I know that because I planned the shot using the Photo Pills app. But I went and shot the, this shot anyway after sunrise. Uh, but you can still see the light sort of coming through the clouds a little bit here where the sun sh would have been or it was, but behind the clouds. And the light coming in was bouncing off the water here back into my face and into the camera. And if I hadn't had the polarizer on there, this you wouldn't have been able to see into the water like that so having that polarizer was important for me in this shot and it just allows me to see into that water and it's added a little bit of color as well and a bit more punch to the image so let's add a tiny bit of saturation because i think a more saturated image or more saturated with color will match what i saw at the time and let's try it with a medium contrast curve as well and I'm starting to like the look of that. Again, though, I think there's too much yellow in the image as I've added that saturation. So let's come down to the HSL and color panel here. There's two ways of doing this. You can either just drag the yellow down like that, or if you stay on the saturation tab here, just click the little icon here and then go over the color on the actual image that you want to change or desaturate and then just drag that down. And as you can see, it's pulling orange and yellow out of the image. I don't want to take too much out because it does add a little something somewhere around there, probably a bit more will be about right. And I want to enhance that green a little bit in this area. So I'm just going to drag that up and see what that looks like. And I, I do like that actually. That's added a nice bit of extra color and it gives the image a bit more punch because the greens over here in the cliff, that's kind of what I could see at the time because the, when you look at grass like this, at this time of year, it's act, it, is, it does actually have a lot of yellow and orange in it. But when you see it with your eyes, it looks green because we look we see grass and our brains tell us that it's green. So the image looked much more like this than it did before I made these color adjustments. So it's not cheating. I'm just trying to recreate what I could see at the time, but I do, I am starting to like this image. Uh, let's now just go get rid of this saturation tool and just have a look at that full screen. I actually think I want to add a little bit more blue to the sky just to balance the color overall. So let's go back to the graduated filter tool and add a little bit more saturation in there. Not that much. 
somewhere around there. And that just, I feel that just evens the image out a little bit. Let's just test the tint here to see what that's. Nope, I don't want to add that green in. And I don't want to add too much magenta in as well. Because it just starts to look a little bit fake. I might add about five on the magenta scale there. Just to add an extra touch to the sky there. So let's undo that. Let's press F again to see it full screen. And yep, I'm start. I do like that image now, actually. So let us have a look at the horizon line. Just make sure that's straight. Because like I said today, I haven't been performing particularly well. And much closer on that one. Barely any difference. And I want to just, I'm just going to add a little bit of noise reduction just to, I don't really need that, but I did drag the image up from quite a long way. So I'm just going to add in the luminance noise reduction there just to 20. And that will also take some of the detail out of the sea, which will add to the, the smooth feeling of this long exposure. Now to enhance that, I I'm just going to reduce the clarity a little bit as well. Let's have a look at that. If we go down to the water, you can see that's nice and smooth. And I haven't lost too much detail out of the image. It, it would be sharpened. I think it's just taking Lightroom a little bit of time to cut. There we go. It's caught up now. And you can see those birds on the cliff there. They must have been pretty still because how long is this? This is a four minute. I think it's four minutes and 16 seconds. And they must have been pretty still for quite a while to be showing up in that image. I'm glad they're there because it does add something to the image as well. Lightroom is working a little bit slow because I'm recording this as well and it's stressing my MacBook, but yeah, I'm happy with that. Right, now we've got that. Let us go over to the side here and we'll copy that image. And I don't want to copy the crop because the other one is different, but everything else, I think I can, haven't transformed anything. I can copy that. Then we move over to the second image and we just go to the same way over here, click paste, and it should add those same settings to this image and it should look pretty good straight away. And it does, it does, that's worked pretty well. I might just go down to the lens profile here and just try and remove a bit more of that vignette. That's worked okay. And then I need to remove uh, the vignette where I've made a mistake there with the filters. So let's start from the bottom and just drag in there. And then from the top and drag in there. And then just correct the composition a little bit, drag in a bit more at the top. And there we have it. That'll do. I could, I mean, I'll probably, if I was going to, if I prefer this image, if you prefer this image, I want to know what you think. Which composition do you prefer? A little bit of energy knows there. Which do you prefer? Let me know in the comments down below. And I will go, I'll take this image into Photoshop and just remove these little bits of vignette at the top here. Right, that image is done. So we've got that one and that one. Let me know which composition you prefer. I think I prefer that first one. There is a little bit more in the second one, but there's bits and pieces in this image which aren't perfect. But that's not bad at all. Let me know which one you like best. And we'll move on to the next image, which is this one. So I wasn't sure if this one was going to be a black and white image or not. Just have another quick drink of water. Now I've seen it, I think I want it to be a desaturated color image. That also was part of my thinking, and I think that's how it'll best work. So I'm exposed a little bit better on this one. We're at ISO 100 at 40 millimeters, F11, and another four minute and 16 second exposure. So let's bring the exposure up a little bit to bring the detail out of those rocks and go to about half a, just over half a stop, and then bring the shadows up as well, bring the whites up. I already like that image. I really like the smooth water. I think I'm off again on that horizon, though. 
And I don't know why I kept making that mistake today. No, don't do that. Hit R, angle tool, and then straighten my lines. Shocking performance in terms of straightness today. But there we go. These things happen. They can be corrected later on, which is what you've just seen me do. So what we're going to do here, I want to bring out, I want to make this water even more smooth. But I'm going to start off by adding some contrast into the image around 40 there, I think. And reduce the clarity. In fact, I'm not going to do that. What I'm going to do is bring in a graduated filter this time from the bottom. And to keep it straight, just hold shift down and it will keep it nice and straight. And I'm going to drag that up to my horizon pretty much. That's the middle line, not the one where that I'm controlling here and there. And then rather than reducing the exposure, which is what you often do with a graduated filter, I'm going to increase it to really bring out the whites in that C. That's gone too far. Let's do it with one stop and then increase the shadows just to bring this area up here. And let's see what that looks like. Right, I like that. I'm just going to reduce it just down a little bit to 0 0.8, 0 0.78. And that's starting to look pretty good. Let's see what adding contrast to that does. Right, I don't want that contrast in there. So I'm going to add a, I'm actually going to reduce it a little bit to really smooth that water out. And then uh, reduce the clarity as well down to, let's try minus 20. And I'm also going to add some noise reduction in there once I take off the graduated filter. Let's just do that and that and that. And where is my noise reduction? There it is. Just add that in to about 20 to take some of the detail out of the image there again. And then what should we do? Let's have another look. Just bring the highlights down a little bit and bring some bring the blacks back to the image. And now I'm going to have a little look at the colour. So I'm going to try increasing the vibrance to 20. This is a trick I use quite a lot, especially with my wedding photography. And this is how I desaturate it or where I start when I am desaturating my images. So I'll go 20 plus on the vibrance and then I'll go down to about minus 10 on the saturation and then see how we're looking. And that's looking pretty good, actually. Let's have a look at the point curve here. Try a medium one. And that's looking pretty good. And I want to affect the color in the cliffs here again. I want to remove some of that yellow again and increase the greens to make it look a bit more like it did when I was there. So have I removed too much yellow? Yeah, maybe a little bit. I've added a bit too much green, I think. And just correct that. And let's try it with strong contrast because we're starting to get a really nice sort of fine art image here. Let's go back to medium a little bit there because I don't want that detail in the water. And now let's try bringing in a filter here, a graduated filter tool here and dragging down from the top. I want to have it a little bit more on an angle this time because I've got the cliffs here and I don't want to put them into total darkness. Let's just move that up a bit so I've got it all in and then drag that down to about there. And let's see what reducing the exposure on that does. Okay, that's not looking too bad. I might have the angle a little bit wrong. What you can do, if you start bringing foreground, foreground detail down with your graduated filter like this. So if I, if I take the exposure all the way down, just to give you an example, you can see I lose detail in this cliff. Let's just put that back up a minute. How you can counteract that is by reducing the exposure and then upping the shadows to bring the detail back out to where it was before in the foreground. And that's worked pretty well, I think, there. Let's just have a look at the color here. I don't want to go that way. I want a bit more blue in there to bring out that natural color that was in the sky and add a little bit of tint again because I want I don't I don't want to have that much green in the image that is particularly there in the water at the moment so that's looking not too bad for the sky let's do this overall as well 
just bring some of that green out of the water and that's starting to look a lot nicer now the water looks a little bit more white than it was let's just try undoing what i did here in the graduated filter and then just doing it for the image as a whole so let's just undo that close the filter down and then just increase the tint a little bit more overall and i've gone a little bit too far there i think because it's starting to affect the color in the rocks here and that is not too bad let's try desaturating just a little bit more on the bar here down to 20 maybe let's add the white back in as well just to balance that out into having true white in the image and bring the exposure down a little as well and you just see how you as you affect one slider so the white's there it directly affects the exposure and you just use you can use the um, histogram here it's showing a bit overexposed in the highlights which it possibly is here but that's kind of what i want in this image to have give it that fine art feel so i don't think we're too far away there i'll just try dragging that de desaturation a little bit more down to 30 i'm going to increase decrease the clarity overall to minus 10 and then increase my vibrance a little bit more to 32 because this is a fine art image that i want overall here and I think it's starting to look that way as we go full screen. The computer's really starting to get stressed now by this. And there we are. I think I'm pretty happy with that. I like the image. Again, you can see those seagulls on the top of the outcrop here. And yeah, you can see the seagulls on there. Again, they must have been pretty still to be showing up in that image, but it adds something to it. I like the over, that image overall. I, I like the detail in the rocks i like the contrast between the jagged rocks and the smooth water come on computer and i think that is a pretty good image there is a phallic element to this rock here though isn't it um in the video or in the vlog when i mentioned it i said that i had this on the rule of thirds line that wasn't strictly true because i put the rule of thirds line in the little gap here pretty much so if you hit r you can see where how i've composed that image and I wanted to get this cliff in here. So my horizon line is pretty much on the bottom rule of thirds there. And I've got this gap here in between this rock and this rock in the rule of thirds there. And it's I think I'm pretty pleased with the image overall. Again, let me know what you think. But I'm happy with the processing there. And I think I will move on to the next one. Okay, so if we go to... Here, I wanted to have a selfie for the cover of the video. I don't know whether I, well, you will know by now whether I've used that one, but I haven't just haven't at this time put the vlog video together. So whether I use this image, I'm not sure. You will know by now better than I do. But let's just do a very quick edit on that one. There's not a great deal to do, so I'm just gonna. At least my exposure is a bit better on this one. Increase the contrast. Increase the shadow so you can see me. I am going to increase the saturation on this one because saturated images seem to be make better thumbnails or capture people's attention a bit more and then get the blacks right. And then I'll add in a graduated filter just very roughly and drag that up a bit so I've got the whole top of the sky in. Drag that down, increase the contrast, put the yellow, a bit of yellow back in there, bit of tint, and then overall drag the shadows up again, get the white balance right, take the green, let's just go back to the start of that one. Yeah, that's fine, and then, and that'll do. It doesn't need to, it, like I say, this was just for the thumbnail, and I think that's probably in about the right place. Let's go for a medium contrast on there, yeah, that seems to work. and what i do is just increase the shadows a little bit more just to give the image that punch which is needed for a thumbnail and because it is a thumbnail i need to crop down to 16 by 9 so let's go up to here down to 16 by 9 get my feet back in it again and there we have the image with me pretty much on the rule of thirds there 
And that should make a fairly striking thumbnail once I add in, because this is a striking guy, isn't it? Striking. Once I add a bit of text here, though, it should make the thumbnail pretty decent for this vlog. And the cliffs very much show the kind of area that I'm in and clearly at the beach as well. So that will do as my thumbnail. Let's move on to the next image. Now, again, look at what I've done with these with this vignette. Same mistake. Same mistake. A comedy of errors today. But never mind. Let's start by just cropping that out straight away. Make sure I've got the angle right. A little bit off. Let's take out that vignette at the top and at the bottom. And then recompose once I've corrected it. And there we go. Right. Quick increase in exposure. Let's go down to the profile corrections. Add the distortion back in. Remove chromatic aberration. What I liked about this image is, if we're talking about composition, is the this black rock. As the tide went out, it revealed this black rock. And I like the juxt juxtaposition against the white limestone in the sea and against these rocks here, or the cliffs here. I probably waited a little bit too long to shoot the shot because, it, uh, for me, there's just too much sand in the image here. I would have preferred it if the water was still lapping over this, but as I was shooting this image, it was going further and further out because it is another 4 minute and 16 second exposure and the water's just gone out and there's no re no longer any water in this area here. But it's not too bad overall. Let's add a little bit of noise reduction there because I'm underexposed again. Add some whites there as well and the blacks and then give it the punch that is needed with the contrast. And I need to go up a little bit on the shadows there as well. A little bit more because there's quite a lot of vignettes in the image. And then let's start adding the colour in. Desaturate because I know from that previous image that it can handle this level of desaturation. And then I want to bring some detail back into the clouds with that kind of graduated filter. Just bring it down subtly, raise the shadows back up, and I'm just going to drag that back up a little bit because I've lost too much sort of exposure in this area here. And that's not looking too bad. Let's bring the highlights down a bit. Should I try dragging the whites up? Yeah, that's kind of working. And then I'll just leave that there. Add a bit of saturation in and go to there. Right, let's try it with a medium contrast curve and reduce some clarity a bit. This is not my favourite image. It hasn't worked out quite as I would have wanted and because of that mistake I've made, it's just underexposed too much and that vignette is kind of making this right-hand side of the image much darker than I wanted it. I'll still probably use it. I'll still share it because it's not. It's a nice. It's nicely composed. I think. It's just I haven't executed the shooting of it quite well enough. Let's just try increasing the exposure a little bit and then dragging those whites back down to there. Yeah, it's just it's it's not well exposed. Let's try what I could do to rescue this. Is bring in a graduated filter from the right hand side like that. And then just increase the exposure like that. And that's worked pretty well, actually, to balance that exposure. And that gives it an overall bit more natural feel. Let's go a little bit more on that one. Again, increase it just a bit more or try dragging the shadows up. A bit more down there, a bit more shadows. Increase the highlights a bit as well. And that's actually evened out the shot quite nicely. I'm just going to drag the exposure back down on the whole image and bring in the blacks again to balance out the overall exposure. When I'm doing that, I'm always looking at the histogram to so make sure I've got absolute black and absolute white in my image. Just to affect the colour a bit again, let's go to 
the saturation slider here. So I want to take out the orange again because I don't like the orange in the greeny grass here. Let's pull out a bit of the yellow as well. And that's desaturated the grassy area here. I'm going to increase the green to make it feel a bit more like it did at the time of shooting. Then I'm just going to increase my overall saturation a bit to bring some of the colour back into the image overall. I think about minus 20. And that's not looking too bad now. I've made those cheating or <laughs> not cheating, but I've had to work pretty hard with that image to bring it back to kind of what I had in mind when I shot it because I made quite a few errors when shooting this. So let's press F to see that in full screen. So overall, not too bad actually, not perfect. It's a shame the water isn't closer to the camera there. So you get this nice, sh like this bit here with a nice sheen or smoothness where the water's been lapping up over here as the, wave co the waves come in during that long exposure. I wanted the same over here. If you had the, what it looks like here in this area here and over these rocks, I think the image would have been a bit more complete with sort of ghostly look of the water against this black rock. I love that. I just noticed the reflections in that rock actually. I hadn't noticed that before, but that looks pretty good. Yeah, I like that. I do like that. Okay, so that's done for now. Let's go back to the grid as the computer catches up and we'll go to the next image. Is this our final image? Yes, it is. This is the final image. And let's have into the develop module and we'll go through this again. So what actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the previous image. I'm going to copy the settings from there. I don't want the local adjustments though. And the lens correction will be fine. Effects, yes. Noise reduction, yes. Everything else, that's fine. I just don't need the graduated filters in the next one. So let's go back to that and we'll go to paste and see what that looks like as a start. Yeah, not too bad. Well, we can start with that. Let's increase the exposure. I've, I'm way underexposed on this one again, as you can see, but it's not looking too bad. Let's drag the whites up overall and the blacks. Let's put in a graduated filter over the sky there. Let's just drag that up so it covers the whole of the top of the image. Drag it back down again and then reduce the exposure in the sky. It starts to reduce the exposure of on the cliffs here. So then again, just to deal with that, drag the shadows right up to bring them back to where we were when we started. So drag the highlights down a bit as well and the saturation up a little bit to bring some of the blue out, the natural blue color out of the sky. And let's just check if our profile corrections on there. Yes, it is. I might just increase that a bit more on the vignette because I've underexposed quite badly. Let's go for the whites again, just to keep them at absolute white. And I don't think I need to desaturate quite as much in this image. What I do need to do though is change the white balance because these rocks look a little bit yellow at the moment and they appeared white at the time. So let's increase the blue in the white balance and that's real look at how much that's changing the image for the better in my opinion as you start to bring some of those blues back into the image and you turn the rocks back to the color that i saw at the time what i do want to do though is just add a bit of tint in to remove some of that green as well and the rocks are starting to look a little bit like they did at the time i shot the image Let's try just desaturating again, back to where we were. And let's go into that graduated filter and just remove some of the saturation that I added there just to see what that looks like. Yeah, that looks a bit more natural to me now because as you add saturation stuff in the graduated filter and then you add it to the image as a whole, you're kind of doubling up. So sometimes I'll add it like I did there and then undo it again, just until I get to the position where I'm happy with the image. Right, let's 
go down to the color panel here. Don't think I need to have as much desaturation there on the cliffs. So let's just use the tool here to bring down that color just a little bit. And that's starting to look like a pretty good image. Let's just increase the overall shadows again. to Bring out a bit more detail in the cliffs here. And I'm going to bring the vibrance down to about 20. And let's hit F now to review our image. Yeah, I think I'm pretty happy with that. I might, again, I might have another look at this one. Come back, change a few, look, tweak it just a little bit to see where I'm at. But overall, that's not too bad. Let's just try this one with a black and white, just out of interest. So let's go back to the develop module and click the auto black and white button there. And when you turn to black and white, I always like to add a lot more contrast. So let's boost the contrast there and there. And for me, that's not working in black and white. So I'm going to undo back to where I was. And I think that's a, overall a better image in that sort of slightly desaturated color image right overall they are my images let's just unpick that one and unpick that one and i've come away from the day with what have we got one two we'll call that one image one two three four I'm not totally happy with that one five images i won't count the one of me uh, because that isn't going to be any sitting on anybody else's wall anytime soon. It's just the thumbnail. So one, two, three, four, five decent images from the short time I was out shooting today and filming the vlog and doing Instagram and things like that. There's a lot going on to be, like I said, to be fair to me. I'm creating a lot of content all at the same time. But when I was out there shooting today, it really was an amazing day. And it was just, it felt good to be there. There was hardly any wind. It was a very, really decent day for long exposure photography. And I'm happy with the sunrise one as well. It wasn't the sunrise I had planned. Obviously, the sun's not in the image. And that was actually just before sunrise, this first shot here. But that isn't too bad as a day's or a morning's shooting. And I'm happy with what I've come back with. So, like I said earlier as well in the vlog, or what, like I said in the vlog, whether I said it or not, whether I edit it into the vlog or not, I don't know. But if I'd had a drone today, it would have been so good. It was so still, there was no wind, and it was a perfect day for being out with a drone. So let's just go through the images one more time, just to have a look, see what you think. Uh, these are my final images. That's the first one, and that one, and that's that slightly different composition. That sort of fine art feel to that image. Me in my thumbnail shot. And that one, that's my, I think that's the weakest shot of the day because of that C on the foreground, lack, lack of foreground interest. And then this one here, which I do quite like as well. And I'm pretty happy with the day shooting. So I hope you have enjoyed this or found it useful just me talking through the editing process I I go through. If you like it, please do let me know because I will do it again. Uh, because if but if you guys don't like it, then I won't bother. But if you if you find it useful, let me know so I know to do it again. It's quite easy for me to do just to commentate pretty much through my editing process. I am going to now go into the time lapse folder and create the time lapses for the vlog as well. And that's just a case of editing one image and then you sync the settings. I do have a video for how to create time lapses, so I'll link that up so you can check that out. But other than that, I hope you've enjoyed it. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that. Please leave a comment down below and just let me know if you enjoyed this format. If you did, I will do it again on probably on all of my future shoots. And I just think it's a good way of documenting what I'm doing that I can then film very easily to show you 
how I go through that post-processing procedure. If you've watched it all the way through, I really appreciate you doing that, and I hope you've picked up some good tips along the way. If you haven't done so yet, it's unlikely that you've got this far without having already subscribed, but if you haven't, please do so for videos every Wednesday and every Sunday, and I'll see you on another one very soon. I'm Adam, this is First Man Photography, out.